So in my last video, I spoke about reasons why sometimes it will make sense for you as an international student to choose to at least pursue a one-year postgraduate diploma or a one-year postgraduate certificate if your aim is to pursue Canada immigration. Because sometimes, depending on your age or your economic circumstances, a one-year program might be the best option for you. But one thing that we all know and we are all aware of is the fact that one-year program might not work out for everybody. There are times where, depending on your circumstances, you might have to pursue a two-year program or even pursue a one-plus-one-year program. Because when it comes to the Canadian immigration system, if you pursue a one-year program, you tend to get a one-year postgraduate work permit, which will allow you to work for one year. But if you pursue a two-year program, you tend to get a three-year postgraduate work permit, which gives you enough time to at least make a decision on what you want to do or which route that you want to use to pursue your permanent residency. And other times, one thing that most people also try to do is they will pursue a one-year program. Then during that period, they'll make a decision whether they want to pursue the permanent residency or whether they want to at least pursue another one-year program. Because if you pursue two one-year programs, it counts as a two-year program, which will give you a three-year postgraduate work permit. So in this video, what I want to do is at least look at situations where sometimes it might make sense for you to pursue two one-year programs. Because those who are pursuing a two-year program, they will be tied into that two-year program due to that two-year period. But sometimes people who want to pursue a one-year program might have to make a decision whether they want to pursue an extra one-year program in addition to what they will be getting, which will give them more time to pursue permanent residency. So if you haven't seen my video about pursuing one year program, I'll link that one up here. You can click on it and watch it. But for those who at least haven't seen it, I will try and go over some of the benefits that I listed for pursuing a one year program. The first benefit that I spoke about was time efficiency. If you pursue a one year program, you are basically going to be in school for just one year, which gives you enough time to quickly enter the Canadian job market so that you can accumulate the Canadian work experience that most people try to pursue when it comes to getting a Canadian job. The second benefit that I spoke about was basically financial considerations. Most times, one-year programs tend to be cheaper than a two-year program because for with one-year program, because you are basically going to be in school for one year, you'll be charged for just one year compared to you being in school for two years which means you have to pay for four consecutive semesters. So if finance is actually an issue for you, then pursuing a one-year program might be your best decision. The third benefit that I spoke about in my earlier video was one-year programs tend to be focused education. So basically, one-year programs tend to allow you to specialize in a particular area. Most of the courses are tiered towards a particular subject line that you want to pursue. So if your aim is, let's say, to pursue a course in leadership, and you decide to pursue a one-year program, the full focus of the course is teaching you leadership and nothing else because there's less time for them to be teaching you other things. So if you choose to study a one-year program, it allows you to learn in a focused area where your courses are all very focused on a particular subject line. And because your course is focused on a particular subject line, it allows you to acquire an in-depth knowledge or skills in a particular subject area which tends to make you very competitive on the job market because you can claim to be a subject expert in that particular course. Now let's look at some of the benefits or reasons why it might make sense for you to at least pursue two one-year programs. And like I explained in my earlier video, sometimes depending on your age, financial circumstances, or even your educational background, it might make sense to at least try and tag another one year onto your one-year program when you graduate because IRCC allows you enough time between the time you graduate and the time you need to submit your postgraduate work permit application. And during that period, you can choose to now pursue or apply for another one-year program. And if you get admission, instead of just applying for postgraduate work permit right after graduation, you can choose to go back to school. And when you graduate from that second program, the two will now count as a single two-year program. So for those who want to pursue two one-year programs, let's look at the benefits that Alisda offers you. The first benefit is extended study permits. As I have articulated earlier, if you choose to pursue a second one-year program, basically you are going back to school. 
So which will mean that now you will have to reapply or extend your study permit. And by studying for a second time for a second one year program, basically means you are in school for a longer period of time and post graduation, you will now be able to at least apply and get a three year postgraduate work permit. And because you are still in school, it means you get more time to work whilst you are studying to accumulate more Canadian work experience as a student, which will make you more competitive on the Canadian job market. The second benefit to adding a second one year program is you get to acquire diversified skill sets. The truth is completing two different one year programs can sometimes make you competitive on the Canadian job market because you get to acquire a broader skill set because you can choose to one study your first one year program in marketing and the second one you can choose to now pursue something in let's say supply chain so post graduation as a candidate on the job market you have skill sets in two different areas which will make you very versatile because you are not restricted in one particular area the third benefit that i have seen people at least use when it comes to pursuing two different one-year programs is networking opportunities as i stated in the earlier point doing two, two different one-year programs you can choose to do two different programs in two different areas which will allow you to at least be exposed to professionals in two different areas because most times these one-year programs are being taught by professionals who are actually working in the job market or professionals who have actually been teaching for a longer time so if you are pursuing two different programs in two different areas you get to meet two different groups of people which allows you to at least network with a bigger group of people and open up more networking opportunities for you a typical example will be if you are pursuing your first one-year program in marketing which will mean that you have to possibly join the Chartered Institute of Marketing and you'll be attending their particular meetings. So you are meeting people from the marketing sector. And if your second program, for instance, is project management, it will mean that now you have to be certified as a project manager. So you'll be attending the PMI meetings and meeting people from project management professional background. And all these people will open up opportunities and networking professionals for you. So now that we know the benefits of at least pursuing a one-year program and also knows the benefits of pursuing two different one-year programs, let's look at some of the factors that at least you can take into consideration to help you make a decision whether you should pursue a one-year program or you should stack an extra one-year program on top of the one-year program that you might be pursuing. The first factor that at least you have to consider before you make a decision whether to pursue a single one-year program or two different one-year programs is age. If you are younger and have more time on your side, then pursuing two different one-year programs can possibly give you a competitive advantage on the Canadian job market post-graduation and offer you more time to at least accumulate Canadian work experience whilst you are still in school. Because pursuing two different one-year programs, like I said earlier, allows you to get three years postgraduate work permits which will give you enough time to at least make a decision or take a decision on how you want to pursue postgraduate work permit compared to somebody who did a one year program and might be in a rush to make a decision because they don't have much time on their hand. When it comes to the express entry, for instance, the sweet spot when it comes to age is 29 years. The moment you go past 29 years, you start losing five points for every birthday that you celebrate. So if you are somebody who is below 29 years, then you can afford to stay in school for an extra year without getting punished when it comes to the point system. So if age is on your side, then go for it. You can just go for two different one-year programs and not be worried about it. The second point that at least you need to consider before you make a decision whether to take a one-year program or even stack an extra one-year program on top of the one that you are studying is economic situations. Like I always say, no two people are the same. The fact that a friend of you decided to pursue a two-year program does not mean that you also have to pursue a two-year program. Maybe in your case, you don't have enough money to be able to stay in school for two years. So what you can do is now make a decision to pursue a one-year program. And now when you justify your proof of funds, which might not be as much as for somebody who is pursuing a two-year program, and you enter Canada, you can now make a decision based on your situation at that point before graduation 
whether you want to stack a second degree on top of the one that you have or whether you want to just go ahead with that one year program and graduate and get a one year postgraduate permit. From my experience, most of the people that at least we came to school with who had a dream of at least stacking a second one year program on top of the one year that we are studying. About six months into the program, most of them have dropped that dream because they realized that based on their age or even their financial situation, it actually did not make sense for them to stack a second program on top of the one that they have. And for most of them, they realized that the one year program that they were in was just enough for them to at least pursue permanent residency because they don't have plans of going through the express entry draw. They were going to pursue permanent residency through the provincial nominee program. The third factor that you have to take into consideration before you go ahead to stack a second program on top of the one year that you have is your educational level. If you have a strong educational background, then a one year program might just be enough for you to pursue whatever route that you want to use for permanent residency. Unless you have dreams of possibly changing your specialization or your aim is to at least pursue a new specialization, which will not necessitate you for possibly to add a second program on top of what you have. As you can see from the express entry point system, you realize that if you are somebody who has a master's degree or even a doctorate degree, if you decide to just pursue a one year program, that might just be enough for you to score the maximum points possible in that particular area. Any other program that you stack on top actually does not add any extra points to what you have unless you just want to extend the time that you are in school to allow you to make some life decisions. So based on all that I have said so far, these are some recommendations and tips that I think you need to apply before you make a decision whether you want to just pursue a one year program or even stack a second one year program on top of the one year that you've decided to at least pursue in Canada. My first advice is to research the immigration programs in the province that you are going to. One thing that I've realized with most people is they just pick and choose courses without thinking ahead, without thinking about what will happen post-graduation. All they are thinking about when they come to picking a school or picking a course is just a tuition fee or whether they have family and friends or whether a friend of them pursued a program in that particular province. You need to look beyond that one. Look beyond just the school, look beyond just the province, look beyond just the course. Make a decision on how you plan to pursue permanent residency post-graduation because based on the province that you land, there might be some extra opportunities that will be allowed to you. A typical example would be, I've had friends who are pursuing one-year programs in Ontario and they will tell you that one-year program in Ontario is not enough. It will put pressure on you. And for most of them, they are pursuing second one-year programs because they realize that they need it to just get three-year postgraduate permits, which will allow them to stay in Canada for an extended time. But similar friends who are in places like Saskatchewan, Manitoba, these guys are more relaxed because they know that in those provinces, there are other opportunities that are available for them just because they schooled in that province. A typical example would be schooling in Manitoba. Post-graduation, if you get an in-demand job, post-graduation in the course that, or the area that you studied, after receiving your two paychecks, which is basically one month's post-graduation, you are able to now go ahead and enter the pool for the provincial nominee program, which will now lessen the burden on your shoulders on whether to make a decision, whether to add a second program or not. My second advice is to evaluate the program suitability. And I always advise people who I interact with when it comes to this. Before you choose a program, make sure the program is a program that is in line with your career goals. I have met people who just chose program because they just want to travel. People who don't even know the program that they are going to study. All because it was an agent who chose the program for them and told them that this is the one that is going to help you to just get admission. Recently, there was a story that we heard about somebody who was just turned away from the airport. All because everything about her application was done by an agent. She had no knowledge of it. All she did was pick up her passport with her visa, 
and made the decision to travel. When she got to the border and started asking her questions, she didn't have answers because she had no role to play in choosing the program that she was even going to study. It was at the airport that she found out that actually she was not even admitted. She was on a waiting list and she was turned back. So always make sure that the program that you are going to pursue is suitable for you as a person because studying is not easy. And if you have no interest in that program, then it's going to be difficult for you. My third advice would be to seek professional advice. Before you make a decision to at least choose a program or choose a province, if you don't have enough knowledge, feel free to consult with at least an immigration consultant, an immigration lawyer, or even an educational consultant, somebody who might have enough knowledge in that area. And that person might be able to advise you to make the right decision on what program to choose or even what province to land in. And that can help save you a lot of headache because that small token that you pay towards that person might help open your eyes to things that you are not even aware of. And even if you are paying that person, make sure that any information that they share with you, you go ahead to at least read further on it and research to empower yourself with knowledge so that you can make an informed decision. My fourth and last advice is to make sure to maximize your work experience. Whether you choose to study for one year or you choose to stay in school for two consecutive one years, make sure that you are maximizing your work experience during that period so that you can improve your prospects when it comes to the Canadian immigration system because those work experience might come in handy post-graduation when it comes to looking for jobs or even choosing to pursue a particular immigration pathway. So personally, if you ask me whether to pursue a one-year program or whether to pursue two different one-year programs, my advice will always be to look at your circumstances before you make a decision. And if you are not too sure, just relax and take a one-year program because when you enter the country, there is always a possibility to now stack a second one year program on top of what you have, which will give you the same benefits that you'll get if you are pursuing a two year program. So don't get yourself confused. If you are not too sure to choose either of the two, go for a one year program, which is a less financial burden on you. And when it comes to at least seeking advice, like I said, if you need help and you need to engage with me, I always make sure to leave a link to my calendar in the description column. So make sure to hit on it just to book some 30 minutes or one hour where you just pay a token. We can have conversation, ask your questions, things that I've experienced, things that I've seen people experience, research that I have done. Then we can all learn together. That can go a long way to help you in one way or the other. I've had people reach out and they will tell you that it's been helpful for them. So feel free to get in touch. If you got value out of this video, the best thing you can do for me is to hit the subscribe button so you can join this family for all of us to learn together. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section. I make sure to respond to all my questions that show up within the first 48 hours. And if you had value out of this video, feel free to share it with your family and friends who have dream of coming to Canada so that they can also learn from it. And if there's something you want to tell other people, feel free to leave it in the comment section so that we can all learn together. Until the next video, cheers.